Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to animate a still photo using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. Just click the free download button. If you have a faster computer, you can use one of the larger photos or you can do what I did and just go with the medium sized photo here. And here is one of the renditions of the final result. So as you can see, we've made this look like the water is flowing down here and then the mist is coming up. I will be using the free gimmick plugin for this method, but for starters, we'll need to open up the image we downloaded into GIMP. So I'll go to file, open recent, and choose this cascade image. So here's the image of the waterfall. Next, what I need to do is duplicate this image. So I'll come over here to the layers panel and just hit the duplicate icon. So now we have two of these. Once I have a duplicate, I'll go to filters, gimmick QT. And here we are inside of the interface for the gimmick plugin. And what you need to do is find the morph interactive filter. So I'll type in morph and under deformations, you'll see morph interactive. And for starters, you'll see preview warning, no preview available. It might say you need two images. So we do have two images here. Change your input layers to active and below if you have your top layer active or active and above if you have your bottom layer active. The output mode is going to be new image. So that just means that once we're done with this and all of the animation frames have been created, it's going to output this to an entirely new composition. And we'll leave the preview mode where it's at. So first output default. And up top here, it says number of frames. So this is going to be how many total frames are in your animation. If you know that you want this to be a two second animation with 24 frames per second, you can go with something like 48. But of course, the more frames you create, the more it's gonna put on your computer, the more strain. So you could always go with something like a one second, 24 frames per second animation, which would mean you wanna type 24 there. If you have a really slow computer, I recommend using less frames, so something like 10. And then for preview precision, if you have a slower computer, go with coarsest or faster. If you have a very fast computer, you can go with finest or slower. I'm just gonna go with normal. And you'll see some instructions here on how to use this. I'm gonna cover these, so I'm gonna skip this for now and just come over here and click OK. So now we have two screens. We have our in-between screen, which I'll place on the right side, and we have our interactive morph or the source on the left. I should say this is just the source because they both say interactive morph. So what this plugin is doing is it's going to use some key points to morph areas of the photo. And when we create those morphed areas, that's what's going to make this look animated because the filter is going to place these in separate frames. But right now there are no frames here. So that is going to be our first task. If we left click on here, that's going to create a frame and that's not going to do anything over here yet, partially because this frame is a still frame and also we don't have any animation running. But what I can do if I wanted to animate this frame is I can click and drag it and you'll see that when I click and hold my mouse up top there, it'll say target. And when I release, it'll now say source. And over here on the in-between screen, you can see something has changed. And that is the fact that the filter has now morphed the photo here and added that morphing to various frames. And if I wanted to preview the animation right now, I can hit the enter key. So there you can see the morphing that's gone on. It's basically taken this frame here, this little key point, and it's dragged the waterfall area downwards. The problem with that is it's also dragged all this other stuff into different places so it doesn't look right. We will fix that as we go forward. So basically what you want to do is just continue to create these key points. So click and drag key points and all those areas will be animated and it will preview them over here in real time as you continue adding frames 
as you continue adding key points, I mean. So we're clicking and dragging these key points along the water. It's best to drag the key points along the same direction as the water or whatever it is you're trying to animate. That way it looks more realistic. So you can see what's happening here as we're adding more and more key points to this. And you'll notice that our key points stop around this area. So that's where I like to click and drag a new set of key points is wherever the first set stopped. And what I like to do to make this look more realistic is if I see water changing direction because of rocks or something, I'll add more key points there. So for example, right here, and then if you wanted to really get detailed with this, you can do every little portion here where you can start to see ripple effects happening from the rocks below like that. Just keep in mind that the more of these you're going to add, the more strain it could potentially put on your computer. And if you look over here, because these key points are not animating very far and it's only on this one area, it's kind of screwing up the animation. So just make sure if you are going to do something like this that you do it throughout the entire animation. So for example, I can add some more right here and you can see what's happening over here. I'm not going to do that on all of the various parts that I want to animate. That's just an example, but I will continue to animate this portion here and I'll leave it at that for now. So let's say you wanted to delete some of these. So for example, I wanted to delete these up here. All I have to do is click on a key point and hit the delete key on my keyboard. So make sure you are in fact clicked on these. If it's hard to click on them, hit the tab key on your keyboard. That'll make these little key points larger. And then you could click your mouse, hit the delete key. And there you can see it's a little easier to take care of now. And then we can hit the tab key to return these back to their smaller size. So next I want to fix the areas that I don't want animating. So the areas I don't want morphing with this. You can see a lot of the rocks on the sides of the waterfall are moving around. So we don't want that. All I have to do is just right click on here and you'll see that when I right click, it's going to create one key point and these key points are called still key points. So these are going to not animate at all. They're going to basically tell this filter, I don't want these areas moving around. So it's almost like an anchor of sorts. And I'm basically just going to add these little key points all along the areas I don't want being animated. And you'll see that as I do that, now this rock is no longer moving. And I can do the same on the other side of the waterfall here, like so. So I like to just layer these across because the more of these you place, the better of a job it's gonna do of not animating certain parts of the image. So we'll do it all along here. So there you can see that's changing that. The top portion is moving around way too much so we can add those still key points along the top. And there you can see that's fixed that. And there's some areas up top here as well. This doesn't have to be perfect. I will show you another step later on on how to help improve this. But I definitely don't want the little person here being animated either. So what I'll do is come up top and just maximize the screen. That allows the person to be more easily clicked. And now I'll just click on the portions, right click wherever I don't want the person animated. So just the entire person here like so. And if I come back over here, you'll see that's helped clean that area up. We can still see the person animating a bit, so we need to just click some of the areas around the person here, as well as these areas down below. And I don't need this screen maximized anymore, so I'm just gonna minimize it a bit. And you can also hold the space bar, and that's showing you where things are animating. So you can see that this red one here is going past the person and that's creating some problems. So what I can do is just click on this red one and hit the delete key and that'll get rid of that. And I think this green one might be creating some problems as well. So I'll click on that, hit the delete key and now the person is no longer being animated. So we can reanimate those areas of the waterfall to go around the person as opposed to over the person. And then I can continue right clicking here and we'll go around the rock because we don't want the rock to be animated either. All right, so there you can see this is cleaned up pretty nicely. There's still some areas moving around, which is fine, but I also want to animate this little misty part. So I want to make this look like it's swirling. So what I'll do is just the same thing. I'm going to click and drag this 
And I'm just gonna drag the key point in a swirling motion and it should match that over here, as you can see. But I probably also need some help having this portion move up. So I'm just clicking and dragging to create these key points. And then I can right click around here since I can see some of that animating up top and I don't really want that. So as you can see, now we have a ton of key points here. I'll come back over to the gimmick filter just so we can go through some of the instructions that I didn't cover. So I'll scroll down. So you can use your mouse wheel to manually cycle through the frames over here. You can also use the K key to show or hide key points temporarily, or if you want to erase them entirely, hit the R key and that will start you back from scratch. And once you are done placing all of your key points, hit the escape key to process them. That's what we're gonna do right now. So let's come over here and we can see our animation. And just real quick, if I scroll through with my mouse, we can see this frame by frame. And then if I wanted to replay this, just hit the enter key and there it goes. But once I'm done, I'll hit the escape key. So that'll take a moment and then it'll process the frames. And once it's done, it'll create an entirely new composition. I can preview this by going to Filters, Animation, Playback. So this is a built-in GIMP feature. And I can hit the play button here, and that's going to animate our waterfall. And you can change the settings down here. So for example, I can double the speed of this, or I can slow the speed down if I wanted to. And I can also change how many frames per second there are. So let's go with 24 and we'll just go with the normal speed. So there you can see that animating. But I'll just leave this looping for now because I do want to reference this for the next portion of the tutorial. So there are some areas that need to be masked out still because they are animating and I don't want them animating. So you can see over here, up top here as well, over on the left side and some parts on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'm just gonna scroll up to the very top. So you can see all of our frames here, number 23 through zero. That's all 24 frames. And what I'll do for starters is I'm gonna come down and click to create a layer mask. And I'm gonna go with white full opacity and click add. And then I'll hit the P key on my keyboard and make sure my color is set to black. I'll just increase the size of my brush and I'm going to brush directly on the layer mask. So I'm gonna paint black anywhere that I don't want animating on here. Decrease the size of my brush and paint in here. You can always come over, right click and go to show layer mask if you wanna see what your mask looks like and you can clean up any of the areas that you know for sure you don't wanna be animated like so. Right click, show layer mask again. So now we wanna add this layer mask to all of the frames below. So what I'll do is right click and go to mask to selection. So there's our masked area. Then I'll come over here to my channels and I'm going to click to create a new channel. So that's just the channel tab there next to the layers tab. I'm gonna choose initialize from selection. You can rename this if you want to. So we'll go with mask and the fill opacity is not gonna matter, so I'll click OK. And I'll just hide that mask and come over here back to the layers panel. Come down here to the next layer. And first I'll deselect this, so I'll go to Control Shift A. That'll deselect my selection area. Come over to the layer mask again. And this time I'll go with channel. And you can see it's going to automatically choose the mask channel that we created and I'll click add. And then I'm just going to shift click on all the layers below and that will automatically add that mask to each one of these layers. And this just saves us some time. And we're going to mask all of the layers besides the very bottom layer there. And now if I come back over to our animation and I come over here and just hit the reload the image button, you can see now we have less movement on some of those areas that we didn't want to be animated. It's not perfect, so what we could do is come back here, hit Control-Z to undo the layer masks, and continue to work on this layer mask. 
and continue to work on the Slayer mask. So let's come back up here. We need to get a little closer to the waterfall and closer to the top of the waterfall, as well as there's an area right here that's not completely masked out. So on our layer mask, with the paint tool, let's decrease the size so we can get closer. So now I'll come back, right click, mask to selection, come over here, let's delete the original, create a new channel here. We'll keep it named mask and initialize to selection. Click OK. Hide that. Come back here and we're going to now create a layer mask. Make sure we have this set to channel and click add. And we'll just shift click down the line here. And then control shift A to deselect our selection area. Once again, come over to the animation and just refresh. And now you can see that mask is doing a better job there. Let's say now we want to export this. I'm going to export this as a GIF because GIFs do allow you to export with animation. So I'm going to exit out of here and I'll go to File, Export or Export As. And I'll navigate to the folder where I want to export this and I'll just name this waterfall animation dot GIF, make sure it does end in .GIF, so it'll export this as a GIF, and then I'll hit export. So here we're gonna get some options for exporting to a GIF. We're gonna check the as animation option, and if you want this to loop, make sure loop forever is checked. And you can also set a delay between the various frames if there isn't one set. So right now I did not set a delay between the frames, it's just easier to do it here. I'm going to set this to 5 milliseconds because I don't want a big delay. I'll just set the frame disposal where unspecified to I don't care. And then I'm going to check this use delay entered above for all frames. So that will automatically use the 10 millisecond delay for all the frames in our animation. And I'll click export. Once we've exported that, you can search on your computer for the file. So here it is. I'm going to double click on it. And here is our animated waterfall. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.